Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress. The last big event of 2016 was the Rapid and Blitz World Championship held in Doha in Qatar in the Middle East. All the stars were there. The first three days was the Rapid Championships, 15 rounds of Rapid, 15 minutes and 10 seconds increment per player for the whole game. This was the standing after 14 of those 15 rounds, 5 players were in the lead with 10 points out of 14. Vasily Ivanchuk from Ukraine, Alexander Grishuk from Russia, Sakriar Mabdyarov from Azerbaijan, Jan Nepomniachi from Russia and Magnus Carlsen from Norway. Before I show you what happened in that last round, I'd like to show you the end of the game between Ivanchuk and Carlsen, which was played in round seven, but it proved to be crucial at the end. Let me show you the final position of that game. White Vasily Ivanchuk, Black Magnus Carlsen, who is not only the classical world champion, but also the defending rapid world champion. Here Carlsen played knight b5 to d4 because his knight was attacked, but after bishop f3 to g4 Carlsen resigned Ivanchuk is two pawns up and is going to win a third pawn here. He's attacking Carlsen's rook and that rook has to keep protecting the knight because if it goes to c7 for example to keep protecting the pawn on g7 then there is rook d5 check with a rook fork a check and also attacking the knight on d4. So white wins a full piece here. If Carlsen avoids that by playing rook d6 check to keep protecting the knight, then he simply loses another pawn on g7 and those f and g pawns will march forward. An important win for Ivanchuk, it was only round 7, but here he beat one of his main rivals. So let's move to the last round with those 5 players on 10 out of 14. Three of those Five players won, Alexander Grishuk, Magnus Carlsen and Vasily Ivanchuk. Let me show you some highlights of Carlsen's game. He was playing Shakriar Mamedyarov and it was played on the 28th of, November, of December 2016. This is the position after 29 b6 b7 from Carlsen. Material is equal, white has a dangerous pawn on b7 and here Mamedyarov decided to sacrifice a piece. It's important to see that he cannot take that pawn. Yes, it, it is attacked twice and only defended once by the knight. But if he takes it with the bishop, then there is knight d7 with a fork. And you might think you can counter-attack white's rook with bishop g5. And if white then takes the rook, black takes white's rook. But then there is an intermediate move, rook b1 and you cannot move your rook away because you will lose the bishop on b7. So this wins for white. Mabdyarov thought it was time to sacrifice a piece. He thought that was the best way to defend the position. He took on d4, and that's a piece sacrificed because of knight b3, and now both bishops are hanging. Mabdyarov undoubtedly had seen that, and he gets three pieces, three pawns for the piece. He can take on f2 with check, king takes f2 and then bishop takes b7 and he has won three pawns for the piece. Knight d4 from Carlsen, bishop c8, rook c6, king g7, king e3, rook a8, bishop h5, Eyeing up the weak f7 pawn, rook a3 check, king f4, rook d3 attacking the knight. So this is a p-swap because white took on c8 and black took on d4. But now f7 is in big trouble. After rook c7, white wins the f-pawn. King f6, rook takes, king e6. And after rook h7, Carlsen wins another pawn. King d6, rook takes, and king c5. Of course, rook and bishop versus a rook is a draw. 
but white still has a pawn and that makes a big difference. Black is not able to win that pawn. Yes, he has two connected pass pawns himself and that's what he is hoping will save him. G4, rook d1, g5, pass pawns must be pushed, rook f1 check, king e5, e3, Carlson played rook h8, rook g1, rook c8 check, king b4, king f4, and Mamedyarov pushes deep on. The black pawns look very threatening, but Carlsen is able to contain them. Bishop e2, rook g2 attacking the bishop, bishop d3, rook f2 check, king e5, rook g2 attacking the pawn, g6, and that pawn is now protected by the bishop on d3. E2, that pawn is almost there, but black, white, sorry, Cooley plays rook c1, defending the promotion square. And after rook g3 and king takes d4, protecting the bishop, Mamed Yarov resigned. So Carlsen ended up on 11 out of 15, and let's see how Ivanchuk got on. Vasily Ivanchuk was white in this last round against the Armenian Grandmaster Mel Kumyan. This is the position after 32 Queen B5 to G5 from Ivanchuk. He did not want to swap the Queens because then there is an opposite colored bishop ending and that is very close to a draw. But with the Queens on there is still a lot of play left in this position. Please note that black is threatening checkmate on g2, so white has to be careful. Of course, so in this position the queen is defending g2, but that is something that he has to be careful of. The best move in this position for Malkunyan was to play king f7 and then, for example, f3 to take that checkmate threat out of the equation. And then after queen f6, the position is equal. But here Malkumyan made a mistake. He played h6 and that opens up his position too much. Of course he cannot take the pawn because of the checkmate on g2. But Ivanchuk found the strongest move, queen d8 check. King f7 and then f3 to stop the mate threat. And now two pawns are hanging. Pawn h6 is hanging and pawn a5 is hanging. Now Malkumyan played queen c5 check and after king h2 he saved his h-pawn with h6 h5. But that was the losing mistake. It was already very unpleasant for him. What he should have played here is something like bishop c6 and then after bishop d6 which is a stronger move than taking the pawn on h6 white will attack the black king on the dark squares but then there's still a defending move with queen a7 and black hangs on for the moment but after the move from the game h6 h5 white is winning Ivanchuk saw it he played bishop d6 and after queen c8 and Queen e7 check, which is much stronger than taking the pawn on a5. Now Kumyan had only one legal move, king g8, and after bishop e5 he resigned. It's suddenly over. Of course there's a mate threat on g7, and the only way to cover g7 is queen f8, but then White simply takes the bishop on b7. So three players ended up on 11 points out of 15. Vasily Ivanchuk, Alexander Grishuk and Magnus Carlsen. The first tiebreak was the ELO average, the rating average of one's opponents. And as you can see, Vasily Ivanchuk's rating average of his opponents was higher than that of Grishuk. 
and Carlsen, which meant that Vasily Ivanchuk is the 2016 Rapid World Champion. Alexander Grishuk took silver and Magnus Carlsen took bronze. The new champion said after the game, I was very lucky. My position in the last round was not very good, but suddenly I was able to outplay him. I had no special preparation for this tournament. I did what I usually do, analyze games, follow novelties and look for new ideas. I have to get used to the idea of being World Rapid Champion. The game against Magnus Carlsen was not something very special for me. I tried to play each game with the same serious considerations. I am looking forward to visiting the Checkers Club here in Doha. I like to study checkers. There are good checkers videos on YouTube. Hope you enjoyed this coverage of the Rapid World Championship 2016. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel and I'm looking forward to seeing your comments. This is Rick from Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.